This is uh, Morten from Ingis TV. Uh, we are here at TechNow's booth uh, at Printing United in Las Vegas. And I'm here with Pete. Pete, I mean, I don't know if we have been unlucky or whatever, but I mean, then our camera didn't work. Then there were some issues with the paper, but now we have got everything sorted out, right? We do. Yeah. So uh, how has it been for you here at Printing United? It's been a uh, fantastic show for us, actually, at Printing United. Uh, very busy, good booth traffic, uh, good solution presentation, a lot of interest from customers. So it's nice to be back in a, in a show with uh, live equipment, and live demos. And I, I take that, uh, I mean, if you look at at the market situation for, for tech now, it must simply be fantastic right now because I mean, everybody talks about the digital transformation, not just in technology, but also moving from analog to digital and you have the right solutions, right? We do and, and we've had a great kind of post COVID wave uh, with a lot of activity, a lot of people put off some decisions, uh, but they've now kind of made, moved them forward and we've got a lot of orders. We're you know, dealing with the supply chain issues as, as best we can. Uh, we haven't missed any deliveries, and uh, yeah, it's it's been a great 2022 for sure. I can tell you that uh, Jan and I we visited your factory in Italy some um, one and a half months ago, and it's it's just amazing to see. I mean, you have such fine equipment, but when you come to the factories, it's really industrial production, right? I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, CNC machine shops, and we're building frames and uh, doing all paint work and manufacturing all our different solutions. Uh, uh, both in, in Sweden and Italy yeah, as well. Yeah. Um, tech now is, uh, I mean, you have a long history now and, and uh, I mean, a lot of installations worldwide. Uh, how is the market for you in the US? Uh, market in the US is great. Uh, we're essentially selling everything we can produce, uh, trying to, to you know, juggle deliveries with customer requirements, the delays that they face uh, with you know, supply issues, power panels, plumbing, uh, so th things, are in a constant state of flux, but uh, going extremely well in spite of that. So are you the one that take the orders from Europe and bring here to market so we can get them in Europe? Is that what you're saying? No, I'm no, not saying I, that. No, I, I know, <laughs> I'm just joking. So uh, Pete, uh, when you talk about this increased demand, I mean, when you introduced the Revolution 50 series, which we're going to see in a second here, is it two years ago you did that? Yep, yeah. that's about right. That was like, I wouldn't say step up because I always find your equipment really uh, comprehensive and good, but it was in a way a kind of step up because you get into something that is way more automated because yeah. I take that also here you understand and, 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 and learn from your customers that there's a tremendous need for a higher level of automation, right? There is, so we, it's called the Revolution 50 series because it, it was more than just an evolution of our previous offerings. It was really kind of a revolution. Uh, the cutting technology is different. The, um, Substrate capability is expanded, the speed is expanded, uh, lots of changes, everything's more robust, the mean time to repair for service groups is, uh, is better. So yeah, it's, it's been a great platform for us, we're continuing to develop, to develop it, we're adding automation to it as we go with uh, barcode driven communication, uh, being able to change cut length on the fly, strip cut dimension on the fly, uh, so yeah, everything you said, and, uh, and that's the Revolution 50. And uh, I, I, when I talk to your European colleagues, uh, one of the KPIs they always talk about when you talk tech now is that uh, even when you bring new uh, it's, uh, revolutions and also iterations of equipment, you always support backwards, continue to, to do that, right? Yeah, of course. Um, we, we're still actually manufacturing and supporting our 500 series cutters for certain applications just because they're the right fit. Uh, that platform has probably been out for 10 years and we're still continuing, we've sold two brand new uh, cutters of that generation this year. So yeah, we, just because we come out with something new doesn't mean we obsolete something that, that works that's old uh, from us. So because there, there's the right fit. So we've got three different platforms of rotary cutting technology. We've got another platform of guillotine cutting technology that uses servos uh, and they all have the right fit. We're not a one size fits all company. And does that also mean that when you can take technology that have been utilized for uh, a, a number of years that you basically also have offerings that fit uh, price-wise into different segments of the market? Or? Yeah, that's a big part of it as well. So um, the, all those cutting platforms I talked about have different price points and you know, someone doesn't necessarily need the flagship product to run you know, a normal substrate at a slower speed, uh, you know, just doing kind of simple stacking or simple single sheet bypass. So. Uh, being a direct sales force, uh, we actually meet with the customers, we meet with the partners, we figure out what the right solution is for that particular customer, and you know that's what we sell and implement to them. Um, 
I know I, I may have asked about it this before because when we, when we talk about the uh, going from a lot of, you know, if, if you look at the OEMs on doing the printing machines, uh, it seems that, you know, with the quality and the speed of the digital printers, it seems that the, this transformation from offset, I mean, because you also have a history in, in uh, tr uh, tra uh, transactional and, and transpromo, but you also deliver like the Libra 800 systems. And I mean, uh, some that you may, you actually just introduced something together that was something that's also for the bookmark. I can't remember the name of it. What was it? That uh, was a the book ready solution. Precisely. Yeah. Tell yeah, me a little bit so, about that. Yeah. Sure. So Libra 800. We have a we have a full suite of of product offerings in our portfolio. You mentioned Libra. That is kind of some book focused solutions. Yeah. We do uh, integrated plow folding with uh, tack gluing of book blocks uh, for perfect bound books. We actually integrate to third party saddle stitchers directly from our cutters. Uh, book ready is actually kind of based on the on the twelve twelve. Yeah, because system I here. remember that when it was like basically you utilized existing equipment with some kind of interfacing. I think I saw it with a Canon device or something like that. Correct. So yeah. so this is a twelve twelve. This is a B two sized finishing device. Uh, we make its little brother called the ten ten, and that's the one you're referring to that we based book ready off of. So I, I do read some of your press releases. That's right. right. Yeah, it'll, yeah. it'll produce book of one output yeah. from two different size sheets for either eight and a half by eleven size A four type books or the six by nine uh, type format books as well, all off you know, the, same, the same press, mm -hmm. just by rotating the sheets and then cross cutting them and stacking them on top of each other. So It must be nice when you have, a, as you said, a direct sales organization that you have such a wide range of offerings, right? Yeah. So should we go and check a little bit what we have here? Sure, yeah, yeah. let's go check yeah. out the Revolution 50. I see, of course, the, the rolls of paper here. Is that some of your partners that have delivered paper so you can uh, test different types of paper and print or, in a, or what yeah, is? Exa yeah, exactly right. So to highlight the flexibility of the Revolution 50, we really wanted to show a number of different applications. So we're doing a, a gloss coated postcard from one of our partners. We're doing some traditional transactional work like from another these, one of our like partners. The, like these ones? Yeah, 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 that, yeah. You know, that's kind of your normal 20 pound uh, bond, 50 pound offset type transactional work. Yeah. And then you have some awesome print there, right? Yeah, this was a really neat application we did uh, well, so with another one of our partners. Is, so uh, it's, uh, a, it's a special substrate that simulates uh, kind of the canvas yeah. oh, that yeah. you would do yeah, a photo yeah. frame on. And you would never think that you would do that in a roll-based uh, digital right. printer, so, right? so, so but it we just were looks feeding awesome. that yesterday. Yeah. I can even show you some finished samples down at the end when we get down there. Super. But yeah, so we were running that on this platform, which is extremely flexible. And then, this is, is this postcard that you're yep, running Yeah, that's here? another coded postcard material. I mean, a lot of things has happened since the earliest generations, right? I mean, I, be, I remember when you when you did roll-based finishing uh, way way back. There was thin substrates, right? Right, exactly. And this is like re really heavy stuff That's, here, right? You know, seven point, nine point, twelve point. The system will actually go up to a sixteen-point cardstock, three hundred and fifty GSM. Uh, this is our brand new, first time shown Unwinder U50 that's part of the Revolution 50 platform. So that's brand new, you say? Brand new, first time it's been in the United States and uh, we actually have orders for three of them, three oh, different customers already that'll be implementing before the end of the year. So just explain to me, uh, because I mean, I'm so stupid. I thought an unwinder was an unwinder, but there's apparently more to it. So what, what is the special thing about this? So as the, as the technology and the press capabilities change, we obviously have to be compatible with those. The, ah, uh, so it's like if you have like an inline solution or whatever, you, then you of course need to be interfacing with the OEM as well, or? Correct, so some of the new inkjet presses are actually running up to 800 feet a minute or will be soon. This platform supports that, whereas our previous generation only went to 600 feet a minute. The, they're getting wider also, so instead so it's of both being, the width and speed, basically. Yep. So this will platform will support 22 and a half inches wide, as opposed to the 22 and a quarter or 22. Is that and typical for like uh, the ProStream uh, things uh, like that kind of machines? Or uh, Canon makes the ProStream that supports that width HP's, and uh, HP uh, as well on the, the new 2200. 2200. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So that is basically, you probably knew way before the rest of us that you were, they were bringing these machines so you could prepare these things, right? We do, we have very close relationships with our press partners so that uh, we know what they're working on and we can be working on compatible products at the same time. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's a big factor. I get so jealous because I mean, I'm from the media, I should know before you, but yeah. you know way longer, long time before me, right? That's so. right. So, uh, and then we go into the cutter, right? Yeah, there, there's another important device right before the cutter. This is a dynamic web aligner. So one of the big changes with the Revolution 50 is the whole platform is taut web. So the web is under tension the entire time instead of being a free loop system. So normally when we have a free loop system, you have these uh, kind of... Uh, kind of loops yeah. and sensors. Yeah, yeah. The advantage to tight web is we can actually steer and control the web because it's under tension. So what you see here is this dynamic web aligner. It's got the web edge sensors, which are the red lights you see there. Yeah. 
And if the web, as it's running, moves away from the sensor, the steering unit actually steers it back. Wow, so you have like a perfect paper path through the That's entire machine. That's exactly right. So as we go into one of our dynamic perforators or scoring machines, the perpendicular perfs are perpendicular and the parallel perfs are, are parallel as opposed to being angled. Um, when you go into a cutter, you want your slitting to be you know, very accurate and, and, and straight. So having the uh, very stable and straight paper path into the finishing devices is important and that's, that's the purpose that that device serves and it's uh, attainable because of the taut web solution. And I take that when you have chosen the, the tight paper uh, path, a uh, constant uh, tension on it, it also gives you all advantages because every, every section you now do, you know exactly the, the placement of uh, the design, right? That's correct. So we don't have the module here, but as part of this platform, we have a two-up slit merge that we can do. And on our previous generations, we had to have a mark on each half of the web when we were doing slip merge because they were free loop based. With the new tight web design, we can actually use a single cup mark on only one side and still achieve very accurate slip merge results. Because you know, you know exactly how the because place it's all the web, controlled right? and under tension, which yeah. saves customers real estate yeah. for the yes. width of that mark. Does it make it easier or more complicated when you set up the first print job then, or? Uh, it, it, it's just as easy, it's okay. just a different technology, yeah. but it has a number of advantages. Yeah. So Yeah, because you have a lot of automation in the setup with the Revolution 50 series, right? We do, yeah. we, can, we can store 99 different jobs so, in the memory positions where there's things like how quickly the stacker drops, what the belt speeds are, and things like that as we run. So this is, this is obviously the cutter, this is a C52. We have two cutters in this platform. The C52 is a dual knife cutter. Uh, using rotary technology, you can see the two knives here. This is what allows us to do across the web chip out or strip cut. So when we're running things like these postcards, things like that photo we talked about, we can actually create full four side bleeds between the chip outs and the gutter slitters that are actually running with the web. So we're, we're actually removing the white space between the cards and the white space and the flush lines and things at the ends of the documents in order to be, give, be able to deliver a finished piece right off, uh, right off so the cutter's no back So no extra work uh, when it's finished, yeah, it's finished. Yeah, no right? guillotine cutting and yeah. things like that. Uh, easy to use operator panel, full Which color. Which is of course very important, right? Yeah. Yeah. The other thing you'll notice is we've moved a lot of our controls, both on the stacker and on the cutter, outside the cover. So instead of opening, you can do it from the outside, basically. Yeah, and we do that for a couple of reasons. One is the covers are interlocked from a safety perspective. We obviously don't want operators being able to reach into things that are moving moves fast, so that's why, of course. But the other thing is sometimes things change a little bit, even with tight web, once things come up to speed or once you start running. So being able to adjust those slitter positions and the mark readers and things right while it's running is very helpful. This is uh, one of our stackers that's part of this platform. This is the S51L. So this uses vacuum belt technology to actually carry the sheets to their stacking position. It also can achieve a 30 inch length on the stacking capability. So we actually have four different stackers for this platform of cutters. Uh, some that use gripper fingers for very high coverage or glossy media. This one that uses vacuum, that's kind of a hybrid because it can do coated stocks, it can do matte stocks, it can handle slip merged applications. And of course it's like with uh, any other TechNow solution, you basically uh, use the modules you need for the application that you do for the majority of your jobs, right? Exactly, we look at the applications, we determine which one is the right fit for the customer instead of that you know, kind of one size fits all mentality. Yeah. And uh, we also have a book block stacker. So when we're plow folding and, and doing book blocks, uh, we're jogging all four sides of the book block stack because the books can be separated because they're glued uh, between them, the pages and the signatures. And then we don't glue, obviously, between the book blocks and it makes it very easy to separate. But yeah, this, this 30 inch stacker is fantastic for the commercial print market. Someone who needs to run book covers and book blocks or transactional work and just a whole mix of different things. And then it just outputs here on the conveyor. Yeah. Right, so we, we can finish it down to finish size or we can actually, for customers that do offline finishing and want to create like a B2 size sheet off the press and then do finishing down to smaller sizes than the cutter may be able to do. Now how fast can a machine like this run? So this machine will support online press speeds up to 600 feet a minute. When we put them online with a press, we actually <clears throat> use a buffering system so that as we're delivering the stacks, we can keep the press running at speed. That also lets us modulate the startup of the press. Uh, when we run them offline, we don't need the buffer. So what you see here is, is just the unwind feeding directly to the cutter stacker. So it, it basically creates the stacks here? It does, yes. 
and then when the stack achieves the set stack height or when the operator wants to do it, he can actually force a delivery of the stack. So that'll finish the, the cutting and then deliver that stack out the back. Oh, and you have offset, uh, and, and you say you decide in the... Correct, you'll notice you there's a north-south offsetting happening here for between jobs. So because of the tight web, we actually had to change the way we offset. We used to offset in a side-to-side, -side or what we call an east-west direction. Yeah. And when the webs are free loop, you can move the web a little bit without impacting it. But when everything's tight web, you can't do that anymore. It creates wrinkles or skews. So we changed our offsetting technology, and there's uh, quite a few benefits to doing that. One is we now pneumatically actuate the offset gate, and it happens almost instantaneously. So we don't even have to slow down to create the offset anymore, uh, which is great for the high speed. The other thing you'll notice is under this conveyor are some of those finished oh, pieces the from the uh, yeah from the from the the photo roll where you can see finished on all four sides, superb resolution, really a neat application for photo processing. We are here, we moved the uh, position a little bit from the Revolution 50 series, now we are at the 1212 Pete. I mean, from the naked eye, it looks like the same kind of machines, but it's not, right? So can you tell us a little bit what this, uh, what this is and what it does? Sure, Printing United is such a diverse show, we wanted to bring a web-based solution and a sheet-based solution. So uh, we went through the web-based solution. This is the 1212, as you mentioned. It is a B2-sized uh, sheet finishing system. So it'll take either a, uh, a pile-fed or a pallet-fed B2-sized input sheet take it through a series of slitting, cross-cutting devices, and make finished size pieces that are much smaller, obviously, than the input sheet, uh, down to a four by five uh, dimension. So, um, very easy to use, very small footprint, economical. Uh, we've actually got a number of these. We also make a, a slightly smaller version of this called the 1010, which is a pile fed, and that one's designed for the, like the 13 by 19 size That sheets. was the one I asked you before about yes, that. I about saw the like ready. a book exactly. already. Yep. Yeah. And basically the type of customers that buy this is commercial printing companies? Or? Uh, this could be anybody. We could finish photos on this. We could finish commercial print cards. We could do uh, statement processing down from you know, the, the double size sheet to a, to a finished uh, single statement. Uh, we also have another module that we can put in conjunction with this called the 1530 that can do dynamic perforating, scoring, and punching for three-hole punch, spiral, coil bind. So uh, really a full suite of cut sheet solutions to go with our full suite of web-based solutions. Isn't that just nice to have that diversity? It is. Or di do you say diversity or diversification? What do you say for this? Either Whatever. Way. Diversity. Pete, Ken, thank, thank you, you very much. Very good.